All right, for this video on supply chain management, we are going to talk about the six different sourcing strategies. The textbook highlights these six strategies as some of the key supply chain strategies that are available. And uh, one thing I want to point out when we talk about these six strategies is that it's not a one size fits all. Uh, when you're a buyer or you're in strategic sourcing for an organization, you might do a combination of some of these sourcing strategies. So for some of your commodity type products, you might want to negotiate with many suppliers, really beat those vendors up and get the lowest price. Um, for some of your complex products that are sole sourced or have uh, really long lead times, those you might want to partner with um, just a few suppliers. You might also work for an organization that uh, does vertical integration or joint ventures. And so, uh, again, you might mix and match some of these strategies depending on the organization that you work for. Uh, it is not a one size fits all. So you can use a lot of these strategies concurrently. So the six, source, six sourcing strategies uh, that are available are, number one is negotiating with many suppliers. Number two is long-term partnering with a few suppliers. Number three is vertical integration. Number four is joint ventures. Number five is Kairitsu networks. And number six is virtual companies. And we will talk about all of these in the next couple slides. Okay, so the first, the first supply chain strategy that we're gonna discuss is the many suppliers strategy. This is where you've got a whole bunch of suppliers, you bring them to the table, uh, you have them really just go out there and you do, many times you'll do competitive bidding and you really just wanna get the lowest price for the products that are out there. So whether it's products or services, depending on it is, whatever you need to buy, you want them to really compete on price and to make sure that they are bringing their most aggressive price possible. Um, suppliers are competing with one another. So you can see I've put the picture of two people arm wrestling here um, because you really want them to go head to head with each other and really come with the most competitive price that they can. Um, and, and many times uh, having a uh, many supplier strategy where you're really focusing on the price, it does not foster long-term relationships with those suppliers because they're really just in it to win that order and then move on to the next. The next sourcing strategy is the few supplier strategy. So on the, the last slide, we were just talking about having many suppliers and making them compete on price. Um, but this one's the opposite of that. This is where we're going to do long-term partnering with a few suppliers. And this strategy really forms long-term relationships with your supply base because you're generally going to give them long-term contracts you're going to have a commitment to them. You're going to be sharing information. They're going to be incorporating lots of different inventory management techniques uh, to help you reduce your inventory. You're going to really mutually work to improve quality and you can work together to drive year over year cost savings. So when you're working with a partner and you've got a long term agreement with them, you can say every year we anticipate that you're going to bring down our costs by two or three percent every year. We will collaborate with you to try and bring those costs down but know that we have that expectation that we still want year over year cost savings, even if we're gonna to commit to you for the long term. So um, this, is, this is really great. Having long-term um, partnerships with just a few key suppliers really helps to um, not only drive down costs, but also really improve your inventory turns, make sure that you've got a really high quality product. Um, you can really do some, uh, some really nice improvements to customer service and forecasting. And so having a few suppliers where you've got really good relationships with them uh, is really beneficial to your entire supply chain. Um, and, and I just want to emphasize that you absolutely can still have aggressive costing with just a few suppliers. Now, as you give suppliers more and more business, the only real risk with that is that as you get more and more intertwined with them, that changing from one supplier to the next after you've given them more and more of your business you've shared more and more information with them they know your forecasts they know your technology you become true partners if you do decide to switch away from them at a at a later date it does become more difficult to do so because you're so um, intertwined together and you've got a long-term relationship so that is one of the negatives because uh, the cost of changing suppliers is huge if you try and break up with one of your long-term partners so down at the bottom of the screen, you can just see uh, an example. I worked for a division called the Programmable Power Division. So that's what PPD stands for. And um, after about a decade of working for them, we went from having about 50% 
of our spend be with key suppliers and 50% being with just everyone else uh, to about having almost 90% of our total spend uh, about 10 years later being with just a few key suppliers. And again, every year we drove down costs, every year we improved quality, every year we had less and less shortages, and every year we improved our inventory turns. So it was a win for us to collaborate with just a few suppliers. The next supply chain strategy is vertical integration. Now, this is really something that's done only at major organizations where uh, they've got a lot of purchasing power and generally when products don't change a whole lot. So vertical integration is developing the ability to produce goods or services previously purchased or buying a supplier or a distributor or even a customer. It can improve cost, quality, and inventory, but it requires a lot of capital, managerial skills, and demand. It's risky in industries where there's a lot of technological change. So um, on the next slide that I'm going to show you, you know, if, if you think about going out and um, if you're Pepsi, every single product that you sell, um, every drink that you sell, it comes in a bottle or a can. So there's not a whole lot of risk in vertically integrating by buying a bottle or now, if you're Apple, on the other hand, and you're making uh, laptops and you're making cell phones and you're making all these products that are technologically changing all the time, it doesn't make as much sense for you to go and acquire your uh, suppliers because that technology is constantly changing and you do want to be able to switch from supplier to supplier as those suppliers can no longer keep up with the new technology that you're going to offer to your customers. So when there's not a lot of technological change, vertical integration makes a lot of sense. When there um, is rapid technological change, you're going to want to just continue to be purchasing from suppliers, not necessarily acquiring them. So there's two different kinds of integration. There's two different kinds of vertical integration. The first is backward integration. This refers to acquiring capabilities at the front end of the supply chain. For instance, suppliers. So uh, suppliers are behind you. They're providing things that are on the front end of that supply chain, where the supply chain starts. So that's why it's called the front end. And if you were buying them, that's backward integration. Forward integration require, refers to acquiring capabilities towards the back end of the supply chain. For instance, distribution or even your customers. So that's whoever's in front of you. After you've manufactured your product, you then provide it or you sell it to distributors or the customers. And so forward integration refers to acquiring those capabilities at the very end of the supply chain or the back end of the supply chain. So it sounds a little um, backwards, uh, right? That backward integration refers to capabilities at the front end. Uh, and then forward integration uh, refers to acquiring capabilities at the back end. So here's what it looks like. Uh, here's just an example of, of what it looks like with Pepsi, Apple, or uh, international paper. So you can see that the backward integration refers to uh, the start of that supply chain. So the start of that supply chain, and that would be the raw materials that you're acquiring from suppliers. Towards the bottom there, this forward integration, this is things that happen after you've manufactured your product. So for instance, Pepsi, they need bottlers. Apple, they need retail stores. So as you get closer and closer to your finished goods, this is forward integration, and this is the back end of the supply chain. So the backward integration is the front of the supply chain, and as you work your way down, forward integration is the back end of the supply chain. The next kind of supply chain strategy is joint ventures. This is a formal collaboration. This is where organizations can enhance their skills, se secure supply, reduce costs, and the key with joint ventures is, is that you are collaborating with another organization without diluting your brand or conceding any competitive advantage or sharing any trade secrets. Okay, so with a joint venture, you are making sure that you are going to create a win-win partnership with another organization that's going to make you both better. Okay, you want, to, you want to make sure that you retain your independence and that both of you are going to get a win-win out of this. This is whether you're going to learn new technologies or use someone else's manufacturing capabilities, whatever that joint venture, whatever your goal is in that joint venture, you're doing so without diluting your brand, giving away your trade secrets, or 
uh, conceding any your, of your competitive advantage. So right now, as an example, um, my organization is working with one of the nation's largest reference laboratories and one of the nation's largest hospital systems. And they are, uh, they have created a joint venture and we are overseeing the integration of that joint venture uh, because we're the nation's largest laboratory consulting firm. So we are helping an enormous reference lab and an enormous health system create a joint venture because they believe that together they're going to take their competitive advantage, whether it be a quick turnaround of uh, time of testing or facilities location or scale, whatever it may be, they both believe that by having a joint venture, they're going to get a win-win for their mutual customers. Okay, the next supply chain strategy is called Kairitsu Networks. Okay, Kairitsu is a Japanese term that describes suppliers who become part of a company coalition. It's a middle ground between a few suppliers and vertical integration. Suppliers often become part of the company coalition. They might even provide financial support or uh, including the Kairitsu network might also include banks, um, but it's financial support for suppliers through ownership or loans. Members expect long-term relationships and provide technical expertise for the members of that Kairitsu network. And it may extend through several levels of the supply chain. So for an example of uh, a tire or a, a car manufacturer like Toyota, you can see on the bottom of the screen, when they were in part of the Kairitsu network, they would have the tire manufacturer, they would have people who make the, the computer chips that go inside of the, of the cars, it, they would, they would uh, have the frame manufacturer, they would have banks, they would have dealerships, whatever it may be, they were all part of a long-term coalition to where they were working together to try and grow sales, reduce costs, and improve quality. Now, my personal feeling is that whenever you, um, you get too close to many of these suppliers and you create some kind of formal collaboration or coalition, um, that's a little different than having a key supplier who you've partnered with and you can still break up with um, if things don't go right. Um, a formal company coalition where you're investing in each other, to me, sounds like you're reducing com healthy competition and collaboration to make sure that you're all trying to get the highest quality products at, at the lowest cost. So you can see uh, Toyota ag agreed with, <laughs> with my personal opinion. Um, and in 2015, they shook up the Japanese um, automaker Kairitsu network because they decided to go with some German suppliers who they believed could offer lower prices and higher techno uh, uh, better technology products. So they broke up their Kairitsu network uh, because they felt like uh, the competition was, was better uh, outside of the network that they were in. All right, and then the last supply chain strategy is virtual companies, okay? These are companies that rely on a variety of supplier relationships to provide services on demand. They're also known as hollow corporations or network companies. These really take delegation to the limit uh, because they're, they're shell companies, they're, they're hollow. Um, one of the advantages of them is that their fluid organizationals, uh, organizational boundaries allow them to create a unique enterprise of changing market demands. So they don't have big buildings, they don't have hundreds of employees, they don't have um, products sitting on the shelf. So if they need to pivot, they can do it quickly uh, because uh, they can change as the market changes because they're a hollow organization. These virtual companies are exceptionally lean, low capital investment, uh, they've got a lot of flexibility and they've got a lot of speed. So uh, an example of what a, a virtual company that um, I worked for back in college when I was an intern is even though I was sitting in a desk playing middleman, uh, so it's not a true uh, virtual company, but uh, we would take orders uh, from various um, utility companies. And they, the, the company that I worked for uh, supplied these uh, utility companies with uh, protective equipment um, capital equipment, just anything they needed to keep um, products um, available for the utility companies. And there was these flammable cabinets that uh, the utility companies used to keep flammable equipment inside of, uh, but they never kept stock on them. So all they did was they continually drop shipped from the manufacturer to the utility companies, and all we did was play middleman and mark up the price. So we would buy a cabinet for $100, we would sell it to someone else for $200, and we never saw the thing. So we were just playing middleman. We were a hollow corporation. We didn't keep any stock and we were just merely 
helping with that transaction. Now, even what I was doing is going to be automated. It's going to be online. And so that's a true virtual company. Okay, so that wraps up the six different sourcing strategies that you can use uh, for uh, your organization's supply chain management. Again, you can mix and match these different strategies. It's not a one size fits all. You really just need to do what's best for your organization, uh, given the market that you find yourself in.